Hello and welcome to some double royalty on the edge. Right, so what we have here is the Kaiser Raja. Raja as in an Indian monarch. Kaiser as in a German emperor. I know, I know, it's spelled differently. <laughs> Never mind that. Uh, so this is a Sebastian Irowan design knife. The second Sebastian Irowan design knife that I've had on the channel. The previous one was a Bestic uh, and that was the Bestic Noble. Um, uh, it looks like uh, Sebastian has a thing for nobility, royalty, perhaps. Hmm, maybe, uh, based on the, the names of those knives. Um, so he is the um, Indonesian designer. And I mentioned in the last review, go and check out his Instagram page because um, some very, very interesting designed knives on the page. And do a little bit of an adjustment on the lighting here. Let's see if that works a little bit better. Better, we'll try that out. Right. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to do uh, that I, or what I always do: materials, dimensions, and weight. And then we'll speak a little bit about the uh, design and attributes of this well, very, very interesting to say the least, um, looking knife. So what we have is a blade steel of CPM S35 VN. The handle is titanium, screws are stainless steel, the, the clip is titanium, big titanium backspacer, and we've got a ceramic ball bearing on this knife. Right, dimensions and weight. We have a blade length of uh, 95 millimeters, and that's 3. Point, let's move that up a bit, 3.74 inches. Blade thickness is uh, a stout 4 millimeter blade, uh, 0.16 inches. Uh, handle length of this guy is 130.1 millimeters, and that's 5.12 inches. Handle thickness, I didn't do that, uh, that's 12.8 millimeters or 0.5 inches. And then overall length of this knife, and uh, let's, I'll speak about that a little flipper attempt in a second. <laughs> the uh, Overall length of this knife, 225.1 millimeters, that's 8.86 inches. And then weight of this knife, let's just park that to one side for a second. Uh, reach over for the scale, um, and let's have a look at this. Um, doesn't seem, doesn't feel like a very uh, heavy knife for the size. Uh, a lot of titanium in this knife, and not exactly a small knife, so let's get that cranked up. Did I say not exactly a small life? I think I did. Uh, not exactly a small knife. Grams, what have we got? Uh, 122 grams. So yeah, I actually, for the size of knife, quite light. Uh, and then that is 4.3 ounces. Right, let's get that out the way and now speak about this knife. So, very interesting shape, as I did say. So, we've got a modified Warncliffe blade, stonewash finish, and a, a flat grind. Edge on this blade, while I'm thinking about it, um, very, very neatly done. Um, relatively sharp at the box. Not the sharpest, uh, sharp enough to cut paper with a little bit of tearing going on, but certainly very uniform um, and even on both sides. So, uh, you know, maybe just needs a little bit of a strop to get that um, nice and sharp. A bit of a harpoon shape to the spine of the blade and that's what lends the, the knife that sort of interesting look and then long jumping around the back of the blade uh, up to that sort of harpoon shape and that jumping very nicely finished off. Each one of those individual blocks uh, has a little beveled edge which does affect the grippiness of it but you know I suppose plenty plenty um, purchase on there it's not like you're going to slide around in that jumping but very very neatly done uh, attractively done got a big front finger choil that obviously acts as your sharpening choil as well and then you've clearly seen the cutout in the blade that extends into a little bit of a groove as well I don't know if it extends like that do you call that a fuller I don't know maybe maybe not but um, certainly <laughs> all cut into uh, the knife and that's actually the easier way to deploy the uh, blade and we'll look at that a little bit later on as well right let's move on to the handle let's keep it open so you can see the handle has this um, nice kind of curve to it but it has this indent here that then runs on onto the blade so the whole blade shape the whole knife shape if you look at it it has that little bit of a detent happening on the or indent happening on the on the knife so when you get hold of it your 
thumb naturally falls into any portion of that indent. So, you know, if you're choking up on the blade, you very comfortably can get forward with your thumb and finger on the knife. And then when you're grabbing it a little bit further back, your thumb is still in that indent. It still catches a little bit of that um, jimping. So, you know, clearly a well thought out design. Not my favorite type of thing. I, I mentioned that in... Um, in another knife that I reviewed, I, I don't particularly like it when a knife is lower at that point. I prefer a general shape that goes that way around. Now, I've seen people speak about the fact that, well, with that sort of shape, it does mean that when you've got the knife in hand like that, you can try and do it sideways. Well, if you can imagine doing cuts like that, you can get against the surface while still holding the knife. And yeah, I, I kind of see that. But typically, if you're going to use the knife like that, you would probably change your grip into that style and uh, let's just have a look at well this one maybe i'm going to use this knife a little bit later for size comparisons but the best tech shodan so the best tech shodan doesn't have that massive indent um but you would typically hold the knife kind of like that to get the blade onto a surface I, I don't know if that helps that much anyway that's just that's my personal preference i don't particularly like knives that have that that sort of shape but it certainly is interesting i uh, can't can't deny that at all a uh, very very interesting looking knife um the rest of the handle uh, nicely curved and then the edges are rounded as well and that all contributes to a very comfortable grip in hand no hot spots on this knife and while i've got it there let's just have a look at the overall size of the knife now um, so you can see in my medium sized hands mentioned in my other reviews that I wear a large glove but I very comfortably fit into that general curve that is made for your fingers I very comfortably fit into that but plenty plenty space on this handle still for uh, bigger hands and then when you choke up obviously you really have a lot of space on this knife right what else um i didn't while we were speaking about the blade i didn't speak about the flipper so the flipper is one of those little skeletonized flippers it looks like a, a skeletonized hammer on a on a pistol um, and quite small and a very squared off edge and i found while fiddling with this knife i will quite often even though it does look quite aggressive with the jimping and that shape i will quite often slip off and <laughs> worked beautifully there but I've quite often slipped off that that like that and, and I figured out what I'm doing because the handle is quite slender in that dimension there it means that when you're getting hold of it your fingers do tend to stray onto the lock when you're holding it like that and then if you've got if you're holding the knife like that to flip it open as you flip you naturally put pressure on that lock so you're working against yourself and then that flipper is it really does and look at the finger there you can see it does bite into your finger so what i found on this knife it's not a big thing but it is something just to be aware of i mean best to try and get your finger off the lock and then it flips very very easily but i found that it's more pleasurable to actually spidey flick this so you can get your finger i i a little bit lower i've been doing a little bit lower than the actual hole so in that groove and then and get hold of that and <laughs> And it's, I do, it doesn't do it, but there you go. Um, the, the knife really does uh, spidey flick very, very nicely. And it should be able to thumb flick. I think that, again, I'm working against myself when I'm trying to thumb flick it. But um, I suppose you... <laughs> I suppose you can with a bit of with a bit of uh, practice right rambled on and on about the flipper and deployment of the knife there let's have a look at the um, this backspacer so very very big backspacer in fact it sort of makes it a closed back design knife but also very very attractively milled that backspacer and you can see that besides the actual blocks that have been milled into it you have these little cutbacks um let's see if we can pick that up uh, there you can see the light coming through it so those go right through into the knife but very very attractively done um, that nice bit of extra detail on that backspace and it wraps around the um, the end of the handle as well and then the lanyard hole also very neatly done so instead of the typical round hole you can see it's a little bit squared off so it does carry on that theme of the blocks I suppose there and the, and the blocks on the jumping and then you get that that square lanyard hole also very very tidily done so all in all a really very interesting looking knife the uh, the hardware on the knife is all torx um nothing dramatic on that uh, but nicely finished off and suits the overall aesthetic of the knife uh right pocket clip i uh, haven't discussed pocket clip yet so tip up 
carry as you can see um, and right hand only not particularly deep in fact not deep at all you can somebody is hooter happy somewhere in the neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> don't know if that's good. the mic's going to pick that up. Never mind. Um, so it is a it is a tip up carry, but as I said, not very deep. You can see if you turn it that way, uh, that's where the the gap is. So quite quite far off the top of the knife when it is in your pocket, but very heavily angled. So you know it should be one of those pocket clips that when it's in your pocket, it should pull the knife if it's in your right hand pocket into the side of the pocket and out of the way of anything else you might um, have in there. But nicely done, the pocket clip, uh, you know, a little bit of shaping to it, milling to it, uh, very, very attractively done. So nice little bit of detail on that. Uh, space in the back, yeah, it is quite tight in the back of that um, pocket clip, so you might battle on thicker material. Um, but springy enough and a sort of little ball machined into the pocket clip um, that will get hold of any material or your pocket. Right, does that cover off anything? Get finger off the lock. Let's see if I can comfortably flip that. There we go. Um, by the way, there is a Sebastian Irwan Designs logo. And I do like that little logo. I spoke about it in that uh, other review that I did. So it looks like a little knife, but that knife is made up of an S, an I, and a D. So a neat little logo. Uh, and then the marks on the other side, we've got the Kaiser logo and we've got uh, S35VN. So all in all, uh, attractive looking knife. I mean, there's that one little thing that doesn't particularly appeal to me, but that's very, very subjective. But it certainly is a very, very interesting knife and <clears throat> a very, very well made knife as well. Oh, something I didn't mention, oh, a couple of things I didn't mention. So this has the obligatory uh, stainless steel insert with the over-travel stopper. And just about every knife I review has that. So you do get the stainless steel on stainless steel locker. But what I did want to speak about, um, <clears throat> yeah, you should be able to see that without the use of the torch. You can see that um, quite a little bit of, uh, uh, quite a little bit, quite a lot, I should say, <laughs> of titanium removed. Um, from the handle on the inside as uh, weight saving, a lot of titanium mulled away there. Um, <clears throat> and let's just see, excuse me, uh, if we've got a little bit on the lock side as well, we do, a little bit uh, removed from the lock side too. Right, guys, um, action generally, you know, did I speak about that? The action is very good. So it is running on those ceramic ball bearings and it is, you know, it feels very smooth and it is one of those drop shuddy knives as well. So, uh, yeah, um, nice, nicely done. Cousin, I think that's it. That uh, pretty much covers off everything on the design. And there you go. You can see I just <laughs> chewed up my finger a bit working against myself. So let's do the spidey rod. <laughs> <laughs> that down like that and there you can see now you can really clearly see that sort of shape of of the the knife um but but very very interesting looking um anything that i need to uh still cover off i think i've covered off everything um all that's really left to do is first of all say uh, uh give my gratitude to blades and triggers really do appreciate their support of the channel another knife that they've allowed me to take home and look over for a few days form an opinion and then uh, share that with you really do appreciate their support of the channel this and many other interesting knives available from blades and triggers so check out their website bnt online and what have we got left to do is a little bit of size comparison so let's start with that knife that i pulled up just now so the best tech shodan a uh, very very nicely uh, designed knife as well so todd knife and tool design knife give you a sense of those two similar lengths um that obviously taller in that dimension relatively similar construction as well also running on the ceramic ball bearings although that's got the uh, carbon fiber on the show side right give you a sense of those two knives also both very interesting um, designs attractive designs as well right let's get that out of the way and then the usual ones that i do use the uh, spyderco manix 2 that is certainly not the Spyderco Manix 2. What is that? I thought that didn't flip nicely. That's the Spyderco Tenacious. Well, since I've got that on the desk and in my hand, let's have a look at that. The Spyderco Tenacious. My lighting just seems to be a little bit off tonight. Let's see if I adjust that a little bit like that. How does that look? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. 
<laughs> anyway, so that's the tenacious versus the Raja. Uh, and now where is that? There it is. Um, <laughs> it's my Spyderco Manix 2. There we go. That uh, Spidey's a little bit better. So that's comparison size with the Manix 2 overall longer knife. That is for sure. And um, yeah, I think similar weights uh, actually. And then uh, the other one that I've always been using is the um, Medford Slim Midi. Wow, that really <laughs> flies out. So the Medford Slim Midi Marauder, give you a sense of that. And then the other one that I've been using, and I do say it always, and I will say it again, um, simply because it has been out for so long. I think so many people will know that knife, and that is the Benchmade Mini Barrage. An altogether smaller knife, but just to give you a little bit of size perspective on that. Right, and I think that does cover off everything. Um, a, a really attractive design and, a, and another nice design by Sebastian Hero. And I, I mentioned go check out his Instagram page. He has got um, some very, very interesting looking knives. Um, and then the other one, as I mentioned, I reviewed. So he's obviously doing some collabs with other uh, knife makers as well. So the other one that I reviewed was a Bestec knife and this is a Kaiser. Nicely made, nicely made, um, you know, to Kaiser's usual, I suppose, high standards. I've never really been disappointed with a Kaiser knife. Give you another look at both sides of that and nice offering and, and uh, you know, good value as well. Not a bad price for this knife too. So, uh, there it is, guys. Um, yeah, not again. The lighting, not not so good today. Let's see if I adjust the lighting there. I'm going to have to flipping them over that way. I thought I could leave it show side, um, but uh, maybe not. There we go. How does that look? <laughs> Give you a last look at the knife. Guys, uh, I think that uh, covers off everything. I really do appreciate you joining me. Um, uh, as I always do say, I would really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button as well and the bell icon so you can be notified every time I release a new video. As I always do say, I would really love you to join me more often. And other than that, you go well and God bless.